My guest at this time is the WBA number 12 ranked junior welterweight in the world. He's 15 and 0 with nine KOs, and of course, he is from where champions are made, the great state of Ohio. He will be fighting on March 4th in Columbus, Ohio, at the Hollywood Casino. Sonny Fredrickson, welcome to Ringside Reporter. How, how you doing, man? Good, man. Good, good. All right, so uh, we. I just got some news. I just got some news today, and I know you probably got it before me. What what actually happened here? Because I know you're fighting March 4th. You're scheduled to fight March 4th, but your uh, your opponent, uh, Cristobal Cruz, has apparently dropped out. Or what happened with that? I guess his, his visa expired, and they wow. So he didn't. So he so, so he didn't. So he didn't really drop out. Like he, he really can't fight because that. So it's a, it's a good reason. That's a pretty good reason. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah, and now they, they, would, they would have been a good opponent. I mean, he's a former uh, featherweight champion and everything like that, so that would have been uh, definitely a good opponent. Any word on uh, who the replacement will be? Uh, not, not, not at this moment. I just found that out a couple hours ago, so they, they're probably getting on it now. So I'd probably know shortly, hopefully. Yeah, right. So what goes through your mind? I mean, when something like this happens, I mean, you, you're preparing for Cruz. This happens. And so, what does that do to you? I mean, like as a fighter, you're going in there. You know that you know you're preparing for this one guy, and now this could be anybody. Now it's like a roll of the dice on who you get. Um, what does that? I mean, how does that affect you? How does that affect your training and all that other stuff? Well, I was preparing for a shorter guy now, so I mean, I, I might fight, fight somebody that's taller now, you know, different style. So, but you know, I've been I have had a lot of amateur fights and just been fighting a lot. So you know, whatever they give me, I'll be ready for it. Gotcha. Um, now, let me ask you a question. And without, I mean, clearly you're not looking past. Uh, no, I guess March fourth. You're not looking past March fourth. But you know, you you just what was your? Let me ask you this before we even go to there. Um, you're currently rated number twelve by the WBA. What was your reaction when you first heard this news? That's got to be pretty exciting. Yeah, it was exciting. You know, just hearing all the hard work's finally paying off. You know. So hopefully I can climb the rankings even higher, you know, and get a world title shot. Right. So if you get by your opponent March fourth, everybody's assuming that you will. What uh, what's after that? What I mean, you got to have some names when you look at those rankings. I mean, because clearly you look at them. What what names stand out to you that you'd say you'd like to say? Hey, you know what? I like that guy. I'd like to fight him next. Well, whatever whatever my team in Rock Nation. Um, has planned for me, you know. Hopefully, you know, we get in there, get my first ten rounder out the way Af after uh, March fourth, you know, then develop and hopefully get start fighting guys inside the rankings. Right. All right. So explain that to the listeners who, who don't know. I mean, and uh, you know, so when you say, you know, I'm going to sit down with my team and we're going to look at it. Tell me how that decision's made. How does that come about? What what goes on in those type of situations? Well, they 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 find the best fights that's good for me. You know, I'm still young, so they, they so they want to um, make sure the fight like caters to me, make sure it, it's it's right timing. Every time is everything. So when it when the timing is right, then we take any fight. So do they come to you and say, hey, you're gonna fight this guy next, or do they come to you with uh, like say like a list of three names and say, you know, hey, you know, uh, we got fighter A, fighter B, and fighter C. This is how you match up with fighter A. Fighter B and Fighter C, which one would you like? Is it is it something like that, or do they just come to you with a name? They, they just come to me with names. They usually they just they um they tell me that they've been looking at this guy and this is the guy they want me to fight. And I just I look at them and I tell me, yeah, I've never said no to anybody they ever told me. Right. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I mean, especially uh, you know you're an up and comer, and so you're in. Yeah. You know, you could have easily said, you know, I mean. You know, you really, you could have easily said, hey, I don't want to fight March 4th. My, the guy I was preparing for dropped out. You could have very easily said, you know what, I'm not fighting March 4th because I prepared for this guy. But you're going in there anyway, no matter who they put in the Yeah, who, who, yeah whoever they bring in, I'm, I'm, there, I'm there to fight. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so let me, let me, uh, let me uh, switch gears here. Now, I, I was looking you up today. You have about 50 nicknames. You have Sensational Sonny Fredrickson, Baby-Faced Assassin, Pretty Boy. Uh, wh which one is it? Which one do you like to go by? Um, it, it, really, it really doesn't matter to me. Like, 
my my manager likes to call me the Bay Face Assassin, and yeah. my coach likes to call me Pretty Boy. So I mean, I've been I've been, I've been using Pretty Boy longer. So I mean, I guess I go with that. It's funny because I saw it, and that's what I thought. It was like a Pretty Boy. I've seen Pretty Boy, and I've seen Baby Face Assassin. And then today on the uh, or a couple of days ago, when that poster came out uh, that you're going to be fighting in Columbus on, and it's got a picture of you on there. It says Sensational Sonny Fredrickson. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the, the promoter just made that up, I guess. So, I mean, I wouldn't want it. It doesn't matter to me. You're the man with a million nicknames, my man. Um, yeah. So, all right, so your last fight uh, was on the other card of Warden Kovalev, uh, T-Mobile in Las Vegas. What was it like being part of such a big event like that? You know, it was it was, it was, it was um, a big event. So, you know, I guess it was a good learning experience just to um, be on a card at at that level, you know what I'm saying? I thought I won an Andre Ward's card before, but this card was way bigger than that one. So, I mean, it was, yeah, it was definitely just a learning experience, you know, finding in to see how it, how it works up at that level. Absolutely. And what was it like, I mean, you know, because I thought it would be kind of cool that, uh, I know Tyler McCrary was on that card as well. And I know you guys, yes. tra- you guys trained together, is that correct? You guys were at the same gym? Yes. Okay. Yeah, same coach, too. Does that make it easier for you to make the trip when you got somebody like that where you know and you've trained with and everything? Yeah, yeah, because we because it, it's like we both push each other because you know when we fight on the same cards we um like we just push each other because we know we're both fighting and we know we both got to look sharp and look good and impress people so it's a, it's a good push having somebody on the same team fighting on the same cards. Absolutely, man. And how long have you guys? How long have you been at the Glass City Boxing Gym? Um, I've probably been there for like five years. Wow, okay. About five years. All right. And, uh, you know, what is it? Let me ask you this. And uh, I, I, it does, I'm not sure if Robert Easter trains there. I thought he did, but I wasn't 100% sure. Um, but I know Tyler yeah, does. does. Uh, yeah, Easter does then. Tyler does. And then you do. What is it about that place? I mean, because you're all top contenders. You're all uh, – Robert Easter's a champion. You guys are both top contenders. You probably got more people in the gym that we haven't even heard of that are coming up. What what is it about that gym? What do you guys? I mean, what's going on in there, man? What's in the water? Yeah, it's, it's just a lot of talent. We got a lot of uh, fighters there. We got a lot of fighters. You know, they ain't signed with promoters and managers. You know, and it's just everybody's in there trying to be the best. You know, so everybody's working hard, and it's just it's just everybody's pushing each other, and that's what all, what it's all about. All right, good man. So let me ask you too, like, because you're you're 15 and 0, um, and I know uh, McCurry was the same way. He's a, he's a you know he's an up and comer too. When were you guys? Or let me ask you specifically, when were you first approached by Rock Nation? Um, I I think it was the, the end of my first um, by my sixth fight. It was my yeah my first year of um, being a professional. They approached me then. Wow. So I think it was 2014. So describe to me that experience. I mean, so like you, you got six fights. You got six fights under your belt. You're, you know, you're in your first year or whatever. You probably don't, I don't know if you have a promoter or not. You're still kind of, you know, testing the water, seeing what was going on. And then what happened? Rock Nation just comes to you. you they send a representative and say, hey, we, we'd like to sign you. Or how does that work? So they went through my manager and um then they sent um a guy to my gym and he um watched us spar and watched us work out and just wanted to look at everything and then they wanted to sign us. Wow. So how nerve-wracking is it to have a guy come in there knowing, I mean, cuz you knew he was going to be there, you knew what he was looking for. How nerve-wracking is it at that point? Uh it, it, yeah, that, that was probably one of the most um nervous moments of my career, you know, cuz I just wanted to um, make sure I get signed by him, so you know I had to perform real well that that day, and I did. So it all worked out. Now, did you have anybody else looking at you, or anybody else you were interested in? Uh, Mayweather promotions, whatever. Uh, you know, there's a top rank. There's a billion of them out there. Um, I was supposed to fight on a top rank card before, because mm-hmm. I guess they wouldn't look at me. But my opponent dropped out like the last day before we supposed to fly out, so that didn't end up happening. And then. Um, I think um, my, my manager was gonna um, Golden Boy was gonna he's gonna talk to Golden Boy, but that didn't happen because um, Rock Nation came and that's when we started working with them. No, oh, that's great, man. Great stuff. Um, you know, and they're a big, like I said, man, with with Andre Ward and everybody else like that, it kind of feels safe to go with a big 
you know, with a bigger promoter like that. Uh, yeah. Is this the first card? Let me ask you the March 4th card. Um, is this the first card you'll be headlining? Uh, no, I, I headlined, um, I want to say, three three cards in Toledo already and a card in um, Kentucky. Look at you, man. My God, already headlining. Wow. Yeah. Um, that's insane. So let me ask you this now. March 4th is going to be a big day of fighting. Obviously, we got your fight in Columbus against uh, the dreaded to be announced. Uh, Danny Garcia and Keith Thurman will also take place. Who do you like in that one? Um, I don't know. That, that's going to be a tough fight, you know. I, I want to say probably Danny Garcia. Okay, yeah. A lot of people are picking him, man. They're both undefeated. Uh, a lot of people picking Garcia, too. So, definitely can't I mean, be bad. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if um, Thurman won, though. I mean, it's not a surprise whoever wins that fight because they're both good fighters. It's toss-up, right? I mean, yeah, it's, it's got to yeah, be a toss-up. Yeah, it's, it's a hard one. Jeez. Um, March 4th, Columbus, Ohio at the Hollywood Casino. Sonny Fredrickson versus TBA. Somebody, somebody's going to fight him. Somebody's going to step in that ring and fight him. And somebody's probably going to step in that ring and lose, man, because uh, I know he ain't losing. Tickets are still available. Go check yeah. it out. Follow Sonny Fredrickson on Twitter, at Team Fredrickson. And uh, do you have an Instagram or anything that you want to plug? Yes, um, Sonny, Fred- um, Sonny Fredrickson underscore. All right, Sonny Fredrickson underscore on Instagram. Sonny, thanks for joining us today, and good luck on March 4th.